Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 9.0, and today is day four. Today we're going to dive into the contacts applet for the first time, and I'm going to walk you through the very basics of adding a single contact within command. So again, on the left-hand side, we've got all of our applets here. Second one down is contacts. And you can see anytime you go into an applet, if there's something new or an upgrade or, or sometimes even just an alert, if there's gonna be some work done, things like that, you're gonna have some alerts here at the top. So you can see we've got a new AI timeline summary and a new merge and dedupe feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and close both of those so we get a little more screen. And we're gonna go through this actual home screen. After we get a few contacts in, it'll make more sense, we'll have some more functionality. So anytime you're in command and you want to start or add something new, there's almost always this greenish blue button at the top right hand corner. This is how we're going to manually add a single contact into command. So I'm gonna click on add contact. And the cool thing is we get these tool tips. So since this is the first time I've done this inside of command, it's gonna walk me through uh, sort of a series of tool tips and guides that help me. Hey, it's talking about find phone number, lead source, uh, mark as lead, whether or not you want that, and then tags, and I think it ends with add more information. Yep, so let's walk through that process. Let's say we're gonna add Mickey Mouse to our database. So we've got Mickey Mouse. Now we actually happen to know that Mickey's married to Minnie Mouse. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by adding that relationship. What this is going to do is add a second contact to my database. You can see Minnie is not in my database at this point and many is Mickey's spouse. You can see there's an entire drop down here with additional relationships that you could choose to add. Uh, but we're gonna start with one of the simpler ones, just spouse. Oops, when I clicked on that drop down, it took many away. So we're gonna put Minnie Mouse. We're gonna click create as new. You can see when we do that, we get another modal that pops up and we're just gonna put in Minnie's phone number. And I'm sorry, that's Minnie's email address. It's not an email address. So this is mini the mouse at gfail.com and we'll put in that fake phone number. Let's see if it takes that. There we go. All right, so now we've got mini actually going to be created as a brand new contact in relationship to Mickey. The only things that mini will have is that email and phone number that we added. So we are gonna to wanna to come back later and add in any additional information such as address, tags, lead source, those types of things. But for right now, we're gonna focus back on Mickey. So Mickey's email, Mickey the mouse at gfail.com. Here we go. We're gonna put in Mickey's fake phone number. Uh, then we've got the ability where we can say lead source type. So was a, did Mickey come from a lead source that is from the lead source list? And you can see there's a pretty healthy list of different lead sources. Or you can actually have the lead source be another person in your database from your contacts. So you can see that's an option there. Um, next up, you've got mark as lead. So in command, a lead is someone who you are working to make contact with. Uh, typically, that would be somebody maybe that came in from something like a Facebook ad or landed on one of your landing pages, etc. You haven't quite made contact with them. You're sort of still developing that person potentially into an actual contact. Every now and then we get fake contact information. I know that never happens to you. And yet it happens to me every now and then where a fake person comes in and gives me fake information. They're going to remain a lead until I can verify that they are actually a contact. From there, you can see we've got tags. This is a great way to classify individuals in our database. There's a healthy number of tags that are already in here as well, and you can see those in the dropdown. You do have the ability to create custom tags. So I could just say fictional character is a tag I want to create for my database. Since it's not already there, I can create as new. I can select a color. Let's go with good old purple and create that tag. Now that tag is available for future use for future contacts and will be applied to Mickey Mouse. I can come down and click on add more information. I'm gonna get a series of three additional dropdowns where I can add that information. So additional contact information would include some additional emails and phone numbers and then their preferred method of contact. And you can see if you've got more than two, you can click on add email. It'll give you a third and then a fourth. So 
depending on how many emails you have for that person, you could add all that information in. You've also got the ability to add additional phone numbers and you can see you might have their work and their home and their cell. You could add in all of those numbers. Next up, you've got primary address. This is really important, especially for things like the monthly neighborhood nurture. Um, this is powered through our connection with Google. So when you start putting in an address, uh, 2242 Fawn Lake, you're gonna see it's gonna start suggesting specific addresses. This is all powered by that connection with Google Maps. Um, if possible, and if your address is showing up, it's important that you select one. That will help you when it comes to adding the next door neighborhood. We'll get more into that when we get into smart plans and the monthly neighborhood nurture. Uh, but when in doubt, choose the correct address versus typing it completely out. You can see you've also got the ability to put in a mailing address if that's any different. So if you say it's not the same, then you can go ahead and put in their actual mailing address. If it is the same, you can leave that alone. Um, we're gonna remove that address. And then you can come down, you've got social profiles as well. So if you know their Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google+, you, I mean, you see all the different ones, even back to MySpace, gotta have that, right? Uh, next up, the about. So we've got some more information, legal name, description, birthday. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a fake birthday. Uh, let's just say March 15th. I know a pretty important person with a birthday of March 15th. Uh, and then you've got the home anniversary. So when did you help them purchase or close on their home? That would be their home anniversary. We actually have a home anniversary smart plan that fires off of this date. So that's important as well. And then we added many as a relationship, but if you've got any additional relationships that you wanted to add, you could come in here and put that information in. So maybe you know the mom and the dad, etc. You could add in any additional relationships. And then finally, you've got company name and job title. This gets overlooked oftentimes when we get into database health. This is part of a 100% database health score, so something to take note of. Finally, we do have custom fields. You do have the ability to add custom fields to a contact. Those custom fields can be a variety of different fields. So if you click on the drop dropdown, um, actually, let's just say we want to track the uh, names of their pets. So we're going to do pets names, right? That's a new custom field. I can say create it as a new field. What type of field type do I want that to be? And you can see the different types of field types, text field, area, drop down date, checkbox number, URL, percentage, and currency. We're just going to leave that as a text field type of custom field. I'm going to click on create custom field. And now we're going to say, actually, it's not Nacho. That's my dog's name. I think Mickey's dog's name is Pluto, isn't it? I said Goofy. That's not right. It's Pluto. All right. And now we can click on create. And we have our first contact added to our database. If we do a quick, re quick refresh, we'll see that both Mickey and Minnie should pop up. There we go. So Mickey was created through the add contact modal. Minnie got added when we added the relationship to Mickey. So we can now click on these contacts and see all of the information. We are gonna do a run through on these tabs over here and everything you can see on the two screens at a future video but just a basic run through of how, if you just wanted to add one contact to your database with as much contact information as possible, how would you do that? It would be through the add contact button here inside of the contacts applet. That's it for today. Come back tomorrow. We're gonna to talk about a couple of different methods where we can add contacts in bulk. So stay tuned for that. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And as always, I'll look forward to speaking with you again real soon.